Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends. Today we are going to talk about genre theory. So what are genres? I know most of you would say that genres are categories. Uh, that's a simple way of putting it, uh, the uh, definition. Now let's assume that you go to a DVD shop and you find DVDs shelved and located in a particular way you often find that there is a massive range of choice under each section. You have the uh, war DVD section, you have the horror, you have uh, romantic comedy, science fiction, crime, what not. So, endless genres, endless categories and uh, what do these shelves explain to us okay, as a as, uh, scholars or as students of film studies. Now, genres are created by demand. So, let us get it, uh, uh, th let us get this thing very clear that genres are created by demand. So, if there is a particular section in a DVD shop for horror or science fiction, that means there is a demand. If there is a section for romantic films or romances or crime, that means there is a demand for these films. So, uh, for example, understand that uh, how today we have the graphic novel and films based on these uh, type of literature which are uh, very popular. So, uh, demand creates availability or supply. So, genre to get back to uh, what we are doing here. So, what is a genre? Genre is a French term for, uh, for a kind or a, uh, generally it is denoted, uh, uh, it denotes a literary class, a literary type. So, the maj uh, major classical, major classical genres are uh, let us say epic, tragedy, lyric, comedy and satire along with of course, novel and short story. So, genres have a distinct set of rules. Uh, there is a code of shared tools, subject matter and a distinct set of rules, conventions and styles, but within the rules there must also be a sense of freedom. This is important that within the rules a filmmaker should be able to experiment or if you are talking about literary genre, then a writer should be able to uh, um, experience a sense of freedom to experiment. Jean seek to understand film as a specific form of commodity and at a more refined level attempts to disentangle different instances of that commodity. Now, let us talk about genres in literature. So, horror genre is a very popular genre. Um, we usually credit American writer. Uh, the great American writer Edgar Allan Poe, who in 1820 wrote his popular tale of terror. And after this, this uh, um, Wilkie Collins published The Moonstone in 1868, which can be regarded as the first true detective, sto uh, detective novel in English. In 1902, Owen uh, Wister published The Virginians, a Western, and in 1926, Hugo Gernbach brought out amazing stories, the earliest examples of science fiction. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about the development, the genesis, the development, the growth of various genres. Now, it is important to un understand that in genres, uh, a number of approaches have developed that address Hollywood's genre structures, all of which are underpinned by different assumptions about the purpose of genre criticism. Richard Dyer, um, a film scholar in 1973 argued that genres are pleasurable because they offer escapist fantasies into fictional world that remove the boredom of reality. 
he sees these worlds as utopian that offer an abundance of energy excitement and spontaneity jones are constructed for a, a for a, a, a known or guaranteed audience they use repeated storylines and stock characters but again let me tell you this does not mean that a filmmaker is not um, free to experiment because within uh, a genre also there can be various things happening various changes and various experiments happening uh, people uh, also associate uh, reuse of sets props and actors uh, which particular genres now let me focus your attention to what john fisk a genre expert says so uh, i read this citation from uh, john fisk a representation of a car chase only makes sense in relation to all the others we have seen after all we are unlikely to have experienced one in reality and if we did we would according to this model make sense of it by turning it into another text which we would also understand intertextually in terms of what we have seen so often on our screens there is then a cultural knowledge of the concept car chase that any one text is a prospectus for and that it is used by the viewer to decode it and by the producer to encode it so what we are trying to talk about or explain here is that genres are tried and tested and provide an element of security for uh, filmmakers as well as those who invest in cinema and for uh, audience it is always a pleasure to watch things that have been tried and tested um also budget and financial returns are easier to predict where genres are concerned they allow for clear product and audience differentiation and market segmentation the film business uses genre as a mode of labeling and positioning their products now according to uh, dudley andrews in concepts in film theory um, and he is a um, he is another great name associated with uh, john theory, uh, theory. so uh, for him genres are specific networks of formulas which deliver a certified product to a waiting customer uh, so audiences become a waiting and a willing sort of customer for particular genres John ensure the production of meaning by regulating the viewer's relation to the images and narratives constructed for them and John construct the proper spectator uh, for the consumption for their own consumption Rick Altman is another name um, which is associated with John theory he, uh, he has written a seminal article a semantic syntactic approach to film genre published in 1984 and he asks what is a genre what is a film genre he goes on to explain that genre analysis is both inclusive and exclusive it is inclusive because it includes a long list of films that can be specifically categorized genres are exclusive as certain films within a genre are canonized and are discussed as exemplary texts he also felt that genre theory has ignored the fact that genreic theory and definitions were first introduced by the film industry one has to consider how genres develop mutate and rise and fall in popularity altman's two approaches to understand genres are semantic and syntactic semantics is the building blocks of a genre including costume acting cinematography iconography etc um and syntax concerns the overlying structure and the deeper meaning in film genre which is a book by rick altman published in 1999 uh, altman offers 10 tendencies of literary genres and genres have a distinct border and can be firmly identified according to altman john theris for altman seek to describe the already existing genres the internal functioning of genre text is considered entirely observable and objectively analyzable text with similar characteristics systematically generate similar meanings similar um, uses and similar readings 
producers, readers and critics all share the same interest in genre. Altman also adds that readers expectation and audience reaction have received the independent have received little in, uh, independent attention. Uh, he also raises the question of genre history and posits if genre be or genre can be objectively or scientifically studied. For Altman, genres are never neutral categories and genre theories generally do not recognize the institutional character of their own genreic practice. From there we move on to the uh, to another uh, category that is subgenre. So, subgenres are categories within an overarching genre. Uh, these are defined by specific characteristics. For example, we use the term slasher films for horror films, then we also use post uh, apocalyptic uh, for science fiction films, film noir is a, a subgenre of gangster cinema and sport films of drama. For example, let us consider our own Chak the India, which is a sports drama, okay. uh, and it is a subgenre of a broader category called drama. There is a conflict, there is a hero, there is a hero's journey, and it is a story of a hero's um, fall and rise. Okay. So, therefore, there is plenty of drama in Chak the India, then we have a movie, we have courtroom dramas, again they are sub genre or sub categories of drama. Think of a movie such as A Few Good Men or Twelve Angry Men and these are courtroom dramas. Um, there are three major thrusts of theoretical development here. First, the taxonomic view of genre which attempts to map the boundaries between genre classes. Secondly, the view of genre as an economic uh, strategy for organizing film production schedules and third, the view of genre as a function of cognition as a contract between producers and consumers which renders film uh, intelligible on some level. A genre anal analysis of cinema offers not only the possibility of describing the systematic nature of Hollywood as an industry in which differentiation between individual films occurs only within an overarching logic of product standardization, but we have to understand that genres are no longer just Hollywood categories in Hindi cinema or in uh, particularly even our regional uh, cinema, we do depend a lot on genre categories. Think of our own um, uh, recently released NH10, which is a subcategory of a slasher and horror flick. Okay, broad category is horror, but uh, you can also call it, label it as an uh, sorry as a, a slasher cinema. Okay, and of course we have uh, family films and musicals uh, such as Hama Apke Hai Kaun that cater to another particular type of audience, the so-called family audience. So, uh, genres are uh, very well known categories in uh, Indian cinema and of course in Hollywood cinema. We have to understand that these categories prompt consideration of different genres in terms of their collective significance or deeper meanings. In other words, exactly the same value judgment that sees Hollywood cinema as first and foremost a cinema of genre which serves to marginalize the standard practices of Hollywood in the hands of author critics provided genre critics with a critical vocabulary appropriate to the art of those practices. Moreover, it is founded on the problematic assumption to uh, do not only with the genre it implies, implies but uh, um, and also that uh, genre is somehow already out there as an essential structure of text, but also to do with the activity of doing genre studies. While the former assumption rests on the ahistorical premise that genre exists in itself and that it inevitably has essential qualities that can be revealed through proper analysis, the latter assumptions tend to mask the product, uh, productive role of critics and scholars in the definition of genre categories and the institutional frameworks within which such practices take place. Nevertheless, despite these problems, 
problems which Altman argues have had the effect of narrowing genre theory ever since Aristotle's model of genre analysis has by turn um, provo proved remarkably influential and durable and this is what Altman feels that uh, 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 the great Aris uh, Greek thinker and philosopher Aristotle who has given us the concept of drama and its definition. So, his model of genre analysis has been particularly influential and durable. So, in the same way that Aristotle identifies the epic comedy, tragedy and so forth as essential genres of poetry in so far as they are seen to exist in themselves as pure categories of literature. Uh, we also have Ellen Williams who has identified the principal film genres as the narrative film, experimental avaga film and the documentary. For Williams these categories as the conceptual uh, or are the conceptual equivalent of and thus share the same sense of permanence as those described by Aristotle. On this account the labels we ordinarily use to distinguish between films of various kinds such as thriller, horror, science fiction, comedy, romance and so on actually refer to the sub genres of the narrative film. Genres evoke the look of the characters, physical environment, significant objects, um, genres identify uh, identity uh, preserves a film's integrity. Okay. They allow for some expectations, certain things can happen and so certain things can't. Okay. So, um, for example, uh, let us assume that uh, uh, in a traditional, traditionally romantic and family musical drama such as, such as uh, Dilwale Dulaniya Le Jayenge, we cannot suddenly expect a noise uh, environment. So, a particular genre expects certain kinds of uh, uh, environment, certain kinds of characters and there are certain things which can just cannot happen, just cannot occur in a particular genre. Um, now, let us talk about iconography and genres. Iconography is a key term in the analysis of genre. An iconographic approach to genre analysis involves the identification, description and interpretation of cinematic objects, events, figures in order to see how one type of film was marked off from another on the basis of differences in visual conventions. The western was distinguished by its setting both specific and general, uh, the west, the frontier deserts, mountains, monument valley, saloons, etcetera and costume for example, the waistcoat, gun belts, boots, specificities of props and even actors such as uh, you know dependence on reliance on actors like Gary Cooper or John Wayne and later on Clint Eastwood. However, if an attention to iconography worked well for the western and gangster film uh, in Hollywood, it proved difficult to translate such a visually specific methodology to other kinds of films. For instance, it is difficult to isolate distinct um, iconographic systems for crime films or uh, thrillers and most action films with any clarity. Guns and weaponry are common to each and unlike the western and gangster film, there is not necessarily any historically specific criteria to regulate aspects of setting and costume. Tone is another key element in understanding genres. So, tone contributes towards establishing a genre. The way a film uh, is uh, lit or set up, uh, how a camera is positioned can be an indicator of genre. For example, let us see uh, the use of uh, harmonica in the western film, even guitars in the western film, where we cannot expect the leading man to break into um, a very modern dance, let us say disco or a break dance or hip hop. The, the horror movies include prints of uh, um, uh, view shots, silences etcetera to evoke the feelings of fear. For example, let us consider again a, a, a film like NH 10. So, now uh, where does all this discussion lead to? Are we trying to establish that uh, genres are very predictable and unimaginative depending on the same sense and same idea 
uh, over and again just to lull us into some kind of uh, identification with Jean and comfortable uh, the feeling of uh, comfort. So, uh, is that a question? Now, um, it is a very difficult question to answer if Jean's are getting too predictable. Jean's try to avoid predictability if they are uh, um, audiences who will decline and industries will lose money, genres have to adopt to reflect changes in social and cultural attitudes, values and expectations. So, there has to be some change. Okay. Stale genres can be revived by bringing in less predictable and more in imaginative elements. Think of uh, the gay theme introduced in a western like Brokeback Mountain directed by Ang Lee. And uh, what is the role of audience in genre? So, genres depend on a set of audiences. So, this is something that we have to recognize. The film industry generally targets a niche group of audiences. These are based on gender, sexuality, race, nationality, etcetera. Certain films are labeled women's films, for example, romantic comedies, musicals, love stories. On the other hand, genres such as war and gangsters are more like men's films. A romantic films such as um, Yash Chopra's Dil To Pagal Hai or um, the Hollywood movie starring John, uh, Julia Roberts, My Best Friend's Wedding is supposed to be traditionally light, a light hearted romance with a feel good factor. Okay. Think of Karan Johar's films like Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, uh, you know there has to be a feel good factor here, student of the year. So, uh, audience expect these light hearted romantic films to be uh, uh, to have certain elements which make them feel good. So, audience expects it to be in a certain way. So, likewise titles, posters, stars, images all these factors contribute toward a particular genre and the audience's expectations of it. Film industry and producers rely on genres and genre con conventions to secure finances. Uh, so, money is at the center of genres. Genres make movies easier to market because there is a core niche audience waiting to consume the film. Again, there is a scholar Steve Neal who, in questions of genre, uh, suggests that there are two things that are critical, uh, central to the understanding of the genre very similitude that is being true to. Um, life and the question of social and cultural function that genres perform. Now, Neil goes on to explain how some genres hold verisimilitude as highly important whereas, some, some genres can break away from strict adherence. Neil states that something sometimes breaking away from genreic traditions may bring unexpected pleasures for the audiences. Neil suggests that the future of genre studies must consider the prehistory that is the development from other forms of media, uh, all films regardless of quality of those films and factors other than content for, uh, such as uh, advertising, what roles do ad, uh, does advertising or a studio policy or a star images they play in making of genres. Um, there is also a concept of genre blending for example, uh, the classic Hollywood film Casablanca starring Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. So, um, it is an example of films uh, of a film that lacks genre definition and slip between various categories. Uh, it is a, fil a film that crosses genres and uh, again we have an example like Star Wars which is essentially a science fiction, but it also has elements of a western. Casablanca coming back to it can be called a war film, it is set during um, the war period, it is a romance with songs, it is an adventure thriller film and uh, it is also a buddy film. So, in uh, it is all things in to all viewers, again um, uh, a very contemporary film like the matrix, it can be labeled as a science fiction, it is also a, a Hong Kong action flick it can be seen as a neo noir and um, scholars have also tried to do a philosophical reading 
of um, the matrix film. So, it is a pop philosophical movie also. So, it is a blend of several genres. Tarantino's Jackie Brown again uh, nods at Hong Kong action films from the 70s, uh, 70s and 80s and also at black exploitation films of the 70s. It is a sub genre with urban blacks as protagonists. It is also a highest film and it is also uh, a, a nod at girl uh, gang flicks such, uh, and also the 60s western. Now, uh, let us consider something uh, like genre bending, a movie that completely throws out uh, all the rules out of the window and uh, I would like to talk about a Hollywood film called The Hours. So, um, it is uh, The Hours is a, 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 a novel by Michael Cunningham. It is a perfect example of uh, how difficult it could be to adapt a work of uh, literary fiction. Um, here Cunningham reimagines Virginia Woolf's novel Mrs. Dalloway. Cunningham integrates the stories of three women in three different locations and time periods all linked through Woolf's book. Now, Mrs. Dalloway is a story of a single day in the life of an upper class English woman as she plans a party for her husband Richard. All her life her memories to her ex, um, acceptance of death is in, encapsulated in a single day and Michael Cunningham wrote a present day version of Mrs. Dalloway in his The Hours. Now, taking the title of his book The Hours from uh, Virginia Woolf's original working title and it extends the course of a single day to three women, Woolf herself who faces a crisis with her husband Richard over a day during the writings of Mrs. Dalloway. This is set in 1923. Then a housewife named Laura Brown in 1951 Los Angeles whose life is altered forever one day as she reads Mrs. Dalloway and a book editor named Clarissa Worm in 2001, a contemporary version of the Mrs. Dalloway character. So, the Ars is a literary novel based on another literary novel and glorifies reading and the power of literature. It is a genre bending work. The screenplay was written by David Hare, who himself is an acclaimed dramatist. Now, uh, genre theory creates heated debates as it continues to puzzle and excite scholars and audiences alike regardless of the theoretical debates and developments in the debates. Audiences enjoy genre films as they provide familiarity. Apart from various genres, we should also consider the various distinctions that are made where cinema is concerned. For example, we have feature films and short films. We also have uh, categories such as uh, documentaries, where non uh, more fictional motion pictures um, uh, uh, recreate some aspect of reality. And then we also have uh, biographical cinema and uh, uh, then also we can have um, great documentaries based on so, uh, some biographies or well known events and festivals uh, or an expose involving interviews with people. So, this is what I had to tell you about genres and here I would like to draw your attention to the bibliography. So, Rick Altman's film genre, Keith Grant uh, uh, Berry's uh, film genre from iconography to ideology and Barry Langford's film genre Hollywood and beyond. So, thank you very much and we will meet for our next class.